Communion is a celebration that Grace Bible Church considers a vital part of our worship. It is a time for us to remember our Christ's death, our Lord's death and resurrection, and to look with hope for his return. It is a remembrance of what Christ did for us and a celebration of what we receive as a result of his sacrifice. The passage you are going to examine today is Colossians 1, 13 and 14. Colossians 1, 13 and 14. If you do not have a Bible, there are men coming down the aisles who would be happy to share a Bible with you. If you don't own a Bible, please feel free to take one, take this one with you. Let's pray. Father, we worship you as maker and sustainer of all things. We long to understand your truths, and we thank you for your word, which guides and teaches us. Your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light to our path. We praise you for the opportunity to recall the obedience and the suffering of your son on our behalf. We ask that you give us eyes to see and ears to hear as we seek your guidance. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> Colossians 1, 13 and 14. Let's read together. For he rescued us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. The overall theme of the book of Colossians is the sufficiency of of Christ in salvation versus false doctrine. The book is written by Paul to the church of Colossae, Colossae as a warning to avoid false teaching. The heresy threatening the Colossian church was a combination of Greek mysticism and Jewish legalism. Both claimed that it was not enough just to believe in Christ's death and resurrection for salvation. Epaphras, who founded the church, the Colossian church, was so con concerned about this heresy that he traveled nearly 1,300 miles to inform Paul, who was in a Roman church. This is about the distance from Phoenix to Omaha, Nebraska. This letter to the Colossians is a result of Epaphras appealing to Paul for help. As we look at our passage, the first thing we note is that in verse 13, it begins with the word for. For he rescued us from the domain of darkness. So let's look back at the preceding verses to get a better understanding of the, what the word for is there for. We see that in verse 12, that by God's grace, he qualified us to share in the inheritance of the saints of light. To be qualified is referring to being one of God's elect, separated from sin and set apart for God. We are qualified only because of the finished work of Christ. One, comment, one commentator says, Christless, stateless, covenantless, hopeless, godless, self-centered, ignorant, dead, shameless, and having an unblushing, obscene mind. Such a person is unqualified. Such a person was you, and such a person was me. But in spite of that, God and his grace chose to qualify us for an inheritance, and this is what we remember. Verse 12 says that God has enabled you and I to share in the saints of inheritance. We did nothing to be qualified, and we did nothing to be rescued. God in his sovereignty did it all. For he rescued us from the domain of darkness. To be rescued means to be delivered or to draw to oneself. God drew us out of Satan's kingdom to himself. The God of the universe saved us. That is the good news of the gospel. The old is gone, 
and the new is here. Jesus, through his death, crushed Satan and delivered us from his dark kingdom. Believer, this was you and I. We were once a part of Satan's domain, the domain of darkness. And as a result of, result of God's rescue, we are no longer enslaved to sin, but now are under the authority and care of Jesus Christ. We are heirs to his kingdom. As we look at verse 14, it says, In whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Before we could be a part of Christ's kingdom, we needed to be redeemed. Redemption means to deliver by payment of a ransom and was used of freeing slaves from bondage. What does it mean to you and me? Christ was our ransom. His life for ours. He willingly and obediently gave his life as a payment for our freedom from the bondage of sin and from the wrath of God. Redemption results in the forgiveness of sins. No one deserves to be forgiven. Forgiveness is a deliberate act of love, mercy, and grace. Forgiveness is an integral part of salvation. When Jesus forgives us, our transgressions are erased, wiped off of the record. God forgave our sins, granted us inheritance, delivered us from the power of darkness, and made us subjects to Christ's kingdom. This is a kingdom that is forever and cannot be shaken. As a believer, what a comfort it is to know that we are under the authority and protection of Christ. As you take communion today, praise God that he rescued you from the domain of darkness and transferred, transferred you to the kingdom of his beloved son. But if you're here today and acknowledge that you do not know Christ and have not had your sins removed, First of all, we are so glad that you're here, but we want to warn you that your situation is much different than those of a believer. John 12, 40 says, Satan has blinded your eyes and hardened your heart so that you would not see with your eyes or understand with your heart and be converted. You are under the power of Satan and are blinded you're being held captive by him to do his will. Don't allow him that privilege. I urge you to beg God to change your heart. Repent and believe in the good news of the gospel. That Jesus died to rescue you from the domain of darkness. Men, please come and serve us. When your heart is ready, you may take communion on your own. And in a few moments, I will close this portion of our service in prayer.